Well, for those who were expecting the Nifty to remain quiet, that's not been a surprise. What's really been a surprise, however, is the volatility index not declining and, as a matter of fact, staying where it is. Hello and welcome. This is the market trap. So when I say that it's been a very quiet day of trade, I am not exaggerating. But first and foremost, let me just uh, bring in our guest for the day. We have uh, Raja Venkatraman. Uh, and he is uh, with Chart Advice, technical analyst. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. And uh, before I come to you, I also want to sure. get an observation from a market editor, Neeraj. Okay. Uh, any key observations that you made in today's job trade? I don't think it will be different from what you and Shadda are going to talk today, to be honest. Right. But uh, I think Agam rightly put it out, a flattish day of trade. Uh, you could argue that, yes, because of what happened to Dow or otherwise, the market started to trend a bit lower midway or post-noon post, post noon of trade. But really nothing to choose from. A lot of stock specific moves, so Tata Power because of that IEX news or yes. Tata Motors because of the news. So it's a surprise, right Agam? I'm sure Agam will talk more on that and Shraddha will probably talk more on Lupin. But in the morning our assessment was that hey, this is bad news for Tata right. Motors. Yes. Somehow the market seems to have taken it otherwise. So yes. for now or for today, yeah, Tata Motors and the DVA went up. But very, very stock specific, something that we're talking about at the start of the week, that it will remain that way. And even on a flat day of trade, you have enough and more news-based mo stocks which have moved up in double digits. Right. The one surprise though for me came in the mid-cap space or the small cap space. I don't know if you guys thought about it that way, but anything related to Amtech Group was up about yes. uh, a, a 15, 20% Absolutely, trade. yes. A bit of a surprise there, but uh, by and large, very, very stock specific remains that way. I don't right. know what you guys individually think about Tata Motors or you know, the market by and large. But yeah. Uh, suffice to say, ended pretty much the way it started and pretty yeah. much how we expected it to. I think Neeraj, uh, another news bit which really didn't uh, see too much of a stock reaction was, was the, the farm, loan farm, farm loan waiver. It right. almost went unnoticed. Uh, but I had two thoughts on that uh, topic. One of course being the fact uh, that if this waiver does become a populist measure and you have another larger three, four states announcing it, a rating upgrade for India could really become a uh, you know difficulty, uh, especially given the fact the way Indian authorities have been trying to bat for a credit upgrade. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this entire uh, question over the fiscal math deteriorating uh, for these uh, individual states. Uh, you know, that's a question that comes up. And secondly, uh, you know, the farm loan waiver probably just negates everything that the RBI is trying to do. Uh, you know, RBI is trying to go ahead and uh, fast track all the resolution. Of course, that's more to do with corporate loans. Uh, loans. But on the other hand, you have uh, populist driven uh, measures. That is, of course, uh, it's, it's politics involved over there where they're trying uh, to spoil or, you know, I mean, it's expected to impact the Prashad, credit discipline. Yeah, for sure, the point being, I think now all of these things shouldn't come as a surprise because we know that if one or two or three states have done this, right. a lot of other states will follow suit. Uh, from markets parlance, I don't think it damages the books of the PSU banks in a really bad way because they anyways get reimbursed. So yeah, state-owned finances and specific states and their bonds, etc., could well get impacted. But I don't think the markets will get negatively surprised as a result of any of these uh, states or even some other states coming out and announcing them. Right. So, yeah, so no surprises there. Maybe the impacts uh, that will come in will come in over the next 12 months uh, when it comes to macro borrowing by the individual states. You are right. It does put into account or does put into question mark uh, what, what happens to rating upgrades per se. I think that's a fight that we'll fight on another day. For now, the banks are not taking or paying too much of it. I agree. Like you said, uh, waivers were some of uh, the election agendas. Even when it came to state, state elections, so probably it's not you. And uh, another interesting bit here is that we would have idly expected microfinance companies to react negatively to this because uh, uh, even while uh, banks get funded by the government or reimbursed by the government for right. these waivers, uh, it's the MFIs who actually do unsecured lending and there's always this worry that they would really be bearing the brunt of these waivers finally. But again, even the uh, microfinance companies that we've spoken to, whether Bharat Financial or Saturn uh, Crayer uh, Network, all of them deny having seen any impact, even from the UP or the Maharashtra loan favor, saying that uh, demonetization was the bigger trigger. Uh, what they were watching out really for was uh, the outcome of monsoons because yeah. they worried that any drought situation would make agri incomes worse. That is what their fears are related to and not this. I'm not sure if uh, denying really helps, but we will eventually see how uh, collections pan out for these companies. But, you know, uh, speaking of the indices, uh, Raja, why don't you come in? Uh, where are you yeah. seeing the indices go in? Actually, if you look at the Nifty over the last few weeks, uh, so to speak, it's actually struggling at uh, 9700. Right. And uh, every attempt to go there, it's meeting with some resistance. Right. So what we see is that uh, at 9700, there is a stiff resistance on the Nifty. So 
quite probable that uh, it will get stalled there for the moment. And uh, we don't look at uh, the June series seeing much upside. Because, right. Uh, beyond 9700, it needs more stronger momentum. And right now, the news flow which is happening, it's not encouraging a positive right. buying in right. NFT. So, you know, it's, it's funny that he said 9700 as being a tough level to cross and that's exactly what we are noticing in the options, uh, you know, data as well. Correct. But before I go to the options data, do you want to take us through very quickly as to what's happened on an intraday basis on the Nifty? Absolutely, Agam. Just like you said, a very quiet day of trade. Uh, even if you look at the uh, trading range, it was absolutely narrow, a trading range of just about 30, 35 odd points today. Nevertheless, the Nifty managed to hold 90s, uh, 9650 at whole but yes almost unchanged after flip flopping between gains and losses uh, just a loss of four points on the index right so again as i was mentioning in the options data too uh, what we're looking at based on maximum open interest that continues to remain with the 9,500 put and the 9,700 call, which roughly denotes uh, a range between which you can expect the Nifty to move, at least in the near term. What's happened in today's day of trade is we've seen a spike in both the 9,700 call and the put, which means we've seen some amount of writing. That also brings me to my next question on the bank Nifty, Raja. Where sure. do you see that panning out? Do you see a resistance there as well? Correct. Uh, like Shraddha pointed out, uh, Bank Nifty did give a strong upcharge yesterday, but then uh, the farm loan waivers have actually put a break in the okay. charge of the Bank Nifty. Yes. And uh, till there is some clarity emerging on the uh, farm loan waiver, uh, I don't think that uh, Bank Nifty is going to go anywhere. Okay. So the trends are pretty much stalled right now. So like uh, Neeraj also pointed out, right. it's better to shift into stock specific movements because uh, there are plenty of opportunities. Right. So while you, uh, it's good for the option players to stick with the indices. Right. The other uh, traders should actually be looking at uh, the stock specific action because that's where you get the trades for the day. Right. So, right. so stock trade uh, trends looking at Bank Nifty, but key gainers as far as NSE is yes, concerned. Agam. So uh, what really did well as far as the benchmark index Nifty is concerned? Tata Power that ended five and a half percent lower. In fact, uh, this is the biggest jump that. Tata Power has seen in 28 months. Now, Indian Energy Exchange is said to have filed a draft prospectus with the SEBI for an IPO. Tata Power said to be one of the exist exiting shareholders, so that they are seeing that impact on that stock. GLR, uh, sorry, Tata Motors also yet another Tata Group company in um, news on the back of GLR IPO reports. You also had. Um, IT stocks like Infosys, Tech Mahindra and HCL Tech which were seeing some strength today. On the losing end, you had Power Grid Corp, Aisha Motors, both of them taking a knock of close to 2%. Lupin lost close to 2% after Credit Suisse warning. They've said that price erosion risk faced by Lupin is the highest amongst uh, the pharma companies given that 75% of their US portfolio is from low competition products. Uh, they've maintained the underperformed rating and marginally cut their target price to 1020. Uh, yet another stock which uh, had been uh, moving, Reliance Industries uh, crossed 1400 yesterday, was almost yes. uh, flat, it's just marginal gains that were seen today. Right. They were crawled on Reliance 1400. Yeah, actually, uh, if you just step back, you'll see that uh, it's been moving up continuously for four days and uh, the run has been phenomenal. So, whoever is long in Reliance right now should uh, consider booking some profits because uh, we envisage a resistance level around 1430. Right. And uh, if you can see today, uh, despite having some positive move right at the start of the day, Reliance didn't move much. So, right. our resistance level is around 1430. So, beyond that, the door opens much wider, but right now it's trading at resistance. Okay, yet another um, stock which has really been doing well the, amongst the Adani Group stocks is Adani Ports and SEZ. Um, any thoughts or any call on that one? Yeah, Adani Port, uh, they received the nod from uh, Australia for their project. So yes. They applied seven years ago, and right now this is come fusion. So, what happens is uh, it gives a great impetus to the trend, and you can see that over the last uh, two months it is actually attempting to cross. And now it does cross the range and uh, we can look at more upside beyond uh, 400, 425. Right. Well, you know, uh, I'm just going to go a little and shift focus back to the broader markets because we, we really haven't seen too much of a change in trend there either. But let's take a look at some of these. We've seen about three gainers for four losers. And in the gaining side, as we, as Neeraj was mentioning earlier, we've seen a lot of activity in the Amtec, uh, auto, uh, Amtec group stocks. So we have seen Amtec Auto gain as much as 9.5%, nine, nine uh, GMT Auto up, 
Snowman's Logistics also stands out in trade, followed by Tata Investments, as well as VST Industries also gaining 66.5%. In terms of losers, Videocon Industries almost every single day showing up on the losers list. BASF India, Godrej Pipawao, Century Plyboard, as well as Dredging Corp and Punch Lloyd, all losing anywhere three three and a half percent But, you know, we were earlier talking about the metal sector, and uh, you had some views here as well. Yes. Uh, if you, uh, the charts of metal stocks have been a uh, little iffy because of the uh, copper charts, because they, directly, right. they have a direct correlation. And if you see, the copper has been rebounding. Right. And because of the rebound in copper, it's impacting the domestic stocks and out of the domestic stocks, stocks are at varied setups. Best among them is Tata Steel mm -hmm. because it's given a clear breakout and uh, the breakout from the nearest resistance level around yes. uh, 550, it's now op uh, around the 535. Right. The door has opened up towards 570. Right. So Tata Steel is one of the most promising stocks from the metal space and you can look at uh, Hindustan Zinc uh, which had witnessed a sharp meltdown over the last uh, almost two months. Right. It's showing signs of bottoming out. Right. And well, the other stock would be Hindalgo, which is also caught up in a range, but anything about 205, it's a good pick. Right. You know, um, of course, uh, we've seen crude also move substantially. There's been a lot of volatility in the recent time. Exactly. What is your view here? Crude, uh, it's at multi-month multi, multi -month bottom. So it's a testing time for crude. Mm -hmm. And uh, if one is able to participate on the crude on a regular basis, beyond this breakdown point, it will be a good short opportunity. Else, if it holds on, it's a reverse. It's a good right. buy opportunity. So right. you can say that it's as an inflection point. Okay. Right. So inflection point for crude. Of course, uh, we're going to be keeping an eye on, on very many stocks as well. But this is all that we have in terms of what we've seen uh, with respect to stocks in action today. Stay tuned in a Bloomberg Quint and we will keep bringing you more.